Welcome to Your Daily Five for April 20th, 2022. I'm Bruce Frazier, and with me is Johnny Scan, John Colucci. Welcome, John. Great to be here, Professor. Always a pleasure. We have a two-part event for you all, starting with today, April 20th, and the next day, April 21st. We are going to be doing two scans. They're related. It's going to be a lot of fun. And so let's get started because we have a lot to do here. And so we have Bang in the Upper Band. This is going to be a Bollinger Band scanning event. And uh, it's really quite fascinating. We're going to do it within the context of the Wyckoff method. And the idea is, is that the Bollinger Band, which you can read about in Stock Charts University and the school, is uh, there are changes in the width of the band over time. And this uh, change of the band from wide to narrow can have characteristics that are valuable to why coffeeans, and we're going to show you an example of that today. What do you think, John? Anything to add before we move on? Absolutely. Well, that's that's the Bollinger Band squeeze, and um, has some very interesting consequences. And so we'll let you read about it so that we can get right into the scan itself. The notion is is that when the band narrows, that it's a sign of consolidation or pausing action very valuable in the Wyckoff uh, structure of things. And we are looking for bands that go from wide to narrow. And with that, let's look at the actual scan language. John, what are we looking at? Well, here we have an attempt to isolate an area of compression in the bands. The bandwidth uh, is reduced. So here we're saying that the highest close in the last 10 days is less than the upper band value. Now that upper band value is the current value. So there's a slight lack of parity between the two comparisons there, but we'll see what happens uh, in the results window. One way we can do uh, to control the number of results is to increase that parity. The width of the Bollinger Band today is less than 10 days ago, the width 10 days ago. So that starts the compression analysis. But we're going to add a secret sauce in here, and that's relative strength. So we want the stocks that come back to have outperformed over 20 periods by at least 5% when compared to the SPX. And we're going to do what I call a proximity sort in other words, how close is the close to the upper Bollinger Band? We want to be up near that band. And because we have asked for a standard sort, we're going to get the biggest numbers first. But keep in mind, every number is negative because by definition in our scan, they're all less than the, the Bollinger Band, the upper band. So that's what we've got on the scan language itself. When we run this scan, we see that we do get a considerable number of uh, scan returns. I think it's 134 on this particular scan. And look at our sort column. We see they're all negative, but H&R Block is the stock that is closest on yesterday's close, because this is run on the last market close. And then we move uh, down the list and see that that uh, number is more negative. In other words, we're further and further away from the band based on yesterday's close. So when you look at the charts coming up, remember, yesterday is the focus of our scan. Today, we want to see what happens. So that's what we have. So this is really fascinating because what we're doing is we're looking for, in effect, uh, relative outperformance, a very important component. And then within the context of relative outperformance, we're looking for a constriction of volatility that occurs uh, somewhere in that outperforming 20-day period. And uh, so this should give us some, an interesting look uh, at the uh, better stocks that are pausing, so to speak. And so uh, let's take a look at the first one, H&R Block. 
And uh, just to uh, orient people, you can see that the uh, band width is quite wide. So for instance here, that's a substantially wide band, which is really the product of a sharp rally that's occurred. And then look at the uh, constricting characteristics that occur. It gets qu quite narrow and that is what is being scanned on. And so this is telling us in the uh, construct of Wyckoff that after an important sign of strength, a rally of importance, that there is a narrowing that's taking place, a pause that's occurring. And then in look at what we uh, discovered in this is a causal structure that looks like a re-accumulation. And uh, so this is very interesting because we're intensely interested in reaccumulation type structures. John, what, what do you see? Well, I put my money where my mouth is because I bought this about a week ago based on the structure and the characteristics of the OBB line, the relative strength. And uh, while I didn't use the Bollinger Bands in that particular trade, I did see a backing up type action, which in the world of Wyckoff, if accompanied by lower volatility, lower volume, it's exactly what you want to see. So just uh, as another Wyckoffian point, this here is a, is a sign of strength, which shows the ability to climb above key prior highs. And then there's a correction back into the structure, which makes a higher low, but then another rally into another higher high. And this one is much shallower. This is the one that produces the narrowing of the band. And so uh, these are definitely characteristics of good bids occurring underneath. And here is the OBV, which is a proxy for volume and it's positive volume over negative volume. Very good uh, characteristic. And then look at the relative strength down here. Relative strength line is on here. It's part of the scan. And you can see a beautiful uh, uh, up, upward trend characteristic here. The other thing that we see is on the MACD, a, uh, a widening or a positive histogram on the MACD here, which is a nice sign that it's attempting to go into a rally phase. Okay, next one is Dow Holdings, a chemical company. And so we are seeing something of a similar look. We have over 20 day period, relative outperformance, sign of strength has occurred here, a correction, but which is shallow. It's producing a narrowing band, which is a sign of a pause in an ongoing uptrend. Uh, John, tell us what you see. Well, that's exactly what I see. It's a beautiful, beautiful pullback to uh, the 6003 area, jump right back up. Look at that five, six, seven days all up. Highest quality rally we've seen in a long, long time, maybe anywhere on this chart. And it's a breakout rally off a consolidation above a prior area of uh, horizontal price action. Really, really like it. And a beautiful reaccumulation type structure. Really nice. Also do take note of the relative strength, the upward trending OBV and a positive signal line on the histogram. Okay, so next is another chemical company, Lyondell. And so here we see again, a very similar structure, relative strength of a rising trend over more than a 20 day period, a narrowing of the band here, which puts it on the scan result. And now it's turned off of a correction is starting to go up into another sign of strength after taking out all of this overhead resistance. John, your thoughts? I like it. I like it a lot. And note that most on the chemical companies, we have slight ambiguity on the OBV lines because they have been downtrending over a long period of time. But note relative strength and the MACD both performing well. So something has uh, occurred in a context of accumulation that is still able to propel price up even though the balance of volume has been trending down 
over uh, two quarters at least. So interesting uh, play there. Who knew that a rising uh, or scanning on a Bollinger band where the price is in the proximity of the top of the scan could actually produce candidates that have great long-term characteristics. So the value of relative strength. And uh, so here we have a restaurant stock, Yum Brands. Take it away, John, what do you see? Well, a little bit of ambiguity here. So we had a, a large structure August to February broke down through the bottom, but fought to come back and really hasn't uh, descended too far off of that. So somewhat ambiguous, note that OBV is down, relative strength is trending up, but long-term it has been down and we're just peaking above the zero line on the MACD. So could be green shoots here. Like that. And then here we see a local structure. This is sort of a springing type action. And so now it needs to prove itself by getting above these prior uh, resistance areas. So it'll be a fun one to watch and uh, see whether it can continue to manifest that positive relative strength. Ulta Beauty. John, take it away. Well, look at the, look at the gusto on that current bar, 3.26. That was not in the context of our scan itself or the day before. And we see that uh, last three days, no closes above the uh, line. We did have a close above the upper Bollinger Band, but remember the scan only focuses on today's value, last market close value. So that's not a violation of the scan terms, uh, but something that we could look at as a way to constrict results. Old resistance poked right through it. Very nice uh, attributes in terms of OBV, relative strength, MACD, Lots of interesting things going on there. We can just annotate that one right out of the books. Yeah, exactly. Uh, There's so much going on. It's such a rich example. So really good. And uh, so uh, now we have the, just the narrowing band right here, and it's attempting to commit up and out after a, a narrow, shallow pause, which is fantastic. It's a beautiful look. Okay, now lastly, we want to just mention the Wyckoff market report. This is a phenomenal report that has, is edited by John Colucci, Johnny Scan. John, this is such a great product. It's, it's got so much productivity in it. Such a great tool for Wyckoffians. Really enjoy it. And because the links are live, it's really a fresh report every day. So you can uh, start your day or take a break go right through it, it's fairly speedy to do so. You also have access to all the scan results through the data tables and personal favorite of mine for getting a good market sense. So this comes out uh, at the end of every week and then is uh, the links are live. And of course you can go in and look at the list itself as you had just said, which is really makes it a dynamic uh, product. And with that, John, I think that we're done. And thank you so much for uh, your time today. And thank you, John, for participating. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.